Thank you. I'll be very brief as well and pick up on some of the points that Philip has made and focus the discussion again on donors. But taken as a starting point that, okay, this um, locally driven problem solving approach is the good one, do we think the donors are really, really up to the task uh, to do this? And looking at it from what I know in the justice and security world, first of all, there are real problems in translating the wealth of knowledge that we know, the dialogue between research, evidence-based knowledge, and the practice of how donors interact. And that has to do with the very difficult organizational um, structures that donors have. It almost feels like we're asking to move a mountain in order for donors to be really equipped to do the kind of things that the uh, locally driven uh, solutions um, require. This, rec this means really looking and donors being able to politically and in their political environment to interrogate and change the ways in which they work. And inst instead of seeing change really fundamentally move towards the kind of change that would be required for, for this form of working, in fact, what we see is an affirmation in many respects of countervailing trends. For instance, procurement of justice and security work is still and looks likely to remain being done through multi-year large programs that get outsourced to large companies increasingly in the form of private consultancy firms where we need to ask the tough questions about who, what skills are being prioritized, who's making the decisions on these skills, what incentives do these, a do these agencies have to deviate from donor set agendas and donor set assumptions about progress which really therefore are not really reflecting locally driven solutions and um, and problem solving. Um, so the organizational issues seem almost insurmountable, and I take that back to you to reflect a little bit about that, despite the fact that there's more visibility about uh, more recognition and sophistication at a discursive level within, doors, uh, within so uh, donors, and that there is some work done by some pockets like Justice for the Poor or like the recognition now that we need to work with informal justice and security sector institutions. But in reality, the bulk of the resources are still top down and technocratic in many respects. And that gets um, reaffirmed in the way that things have been done. But um, secondly, and I think this is reflects also, well, I think it's very important that you c you, you've connected the need to not lose sight of the big picture, the big problems and the big trajectories of development is what we're speaking to, these long-term historical history, historical stories of social transformation that are contested, violent, conflictive, take decades, centuries indeed, and how to, uh, what we need to look a little bit more closely at, it, what, uh, what does that mean for thinking about this, these locally constructed, locally driven solutions? And within that, um, how do we resolve tensions between those locally driven solutions and the normative narratives that un underpin these large uh, stories of transformation that the development, the international development world um, attributes to its stories of progress? What do we do when a local solution um, entrenches, for instance, gender-based inequality and discrimination. Who has the legitimacy to decide how much that matters? What are the boundaries of that? And who's going to decide that? Is it the donors? Is it the local actors? And for what reasons? We know as, uh, that a lot of that has to do with power, po interest structures. But some of it is also about competing ideas regarding what constitutes social justice, what constitutes public good. What are the legitimate, bat what is the legitimate battleground for the competition of ideas about development and do donors have the last say on that or is it local actors that are the ones that should be leading? I'll leave it there. That's great. Thanks very much indeed, Pilar.